Hi all, I am Ravi. I am joining from Bengaluru. Namaskara. And uh, with me, uh, have Pandi. He's quite familiar with name uh, Automation Panda, Dan Andrew Mack. He's here with us uh, talking uh, about uh, the fundamental that's a web driver. That's a web driver. And he's talking about web driver using Python. Yeah, let's welcome Andrew Mack. Yeah, it's all for you, Pandi now. Sure, man. Thank you. And hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. As y'all know, I'm Automation Panda, Andy Knight, also Pandy. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at Automation Panda, automationpanda.com. If you just Google Automation Panda, you'll find me somewhere. So today I'm going to be talking about my favorite programming language, Python. Yay! Awesome. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate for you today is a Python project using Selenium WebDriver. This is Selenium Conf. Uh, many of you probably know I love to use Python for testing. I think Python is one of the best languages for test automation. Uh, I find it to be a uh, fairly uh, accessible syntax. Um, it, it does a lot of things for you. It's just nice to read. Um, it has a, a lower learning curve than some other languages like Java and C Sharp and JavaScript. So it's, it's easier for folks who are new to not only automation, but new to programming to, to get into. Um, and thankfully, Selenium WebDriver has Python bindings along with Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, Ruby, PHP. So I have this project here today, and um, I'll, I'll dunk the link in the sh chat as again to the uh, GitHub repository, just so everybody has it. You can follow along. Boom, boom. So I'm not going to be giving a talk in a traditional sense of like, I'm going to have slides. I'm going to like walk through concepts. This is all going to be hands-on. I'm going to be walking through this project with you together to show how I would structure a, a test automation project with Selenium WebDriver in Python. And what's really cool about today is not only that, but I'm going to be showing how to do it with the screenplay pattern. Um, somehow you have to model your interactions, like when you log into a page and you navigate and all that stuff. You could make raw Selenium WebDriver calls, which is what a lot of like demos and quick articles do. Um, more commonly, people will use page objects where you have your locators and your methods and, well, to represent a page or a component of a page. But I, I strongly believe that screenplay is a much better pattern for modeling those interactions. And I, in my previous projects, I've used, um, or I should say in my, my previous team, we developed a screenplay implementation called Boa Constrictor, but that was in .NET. Uh, recently, I've done a very small, bare bones basic implementation of screenplay in Python, which I will be demonstrating for you today. And this is actually the first time I have publicly shown the Python screenplay package. So let's dive in, shall we? Um, in the project here, I've got it open in Visual Studio Code. Um, fairly standard Python project. It, you put all it, it oh, I should I should also back up. Not only are we using Python with Selenium WebDriver, we're also using PyTest. Uh, PyTest is the most popular Python test framework. It is not part of the standard library, it's a third party package, but still it's, it is by user share, the most popular. And it's excellent. It's, you write your tests as functions. You don't have to write big honky classes. It has a really nice reasonable way of handling stuff and cleanup called fixtures that we'll look at in a second. So in a project, when you are using PyTest as your framework, you will put all of your test cases under a folder called tests. And so here I have a module named test underscore search.py. And that's what's shown here on the main screen. This is the main test case. Um, everything will come through here. Uh, PyTest will search for test modules with functions named test underscore or something, treat those as tests, line them up as dominoes and run through them all. So in our test search module, um, we have some imports here, which I'll explain a little bit later. But our main test case is this one, test duck duck go search. This is a plain old Python function. Um, and in it, I have the basic steps of the test case, and I have them arranged in the arrange act assert pattern. Uh, I'm hoping y'all have heard of arrange act assert. It's, it's a great way to structure your test cases, whether they're uh, unit test cases or end-to-end -end test cases. 
They keep your tests focused on individual independent behavior. If you're familiar with Gherkin or BDD or given when then, given when then is essentially a range act assert. So this is how I structure all my functional test cases. So in order to do a, or, or the test, I, should, I haven't explained what the test is yet. Uh, the test here, what it does is it performs a basic search using DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is a search engine, just like Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever. Why did I choose that one? Because it had easy locators, <laughs> truth be told. So what are the steps to a DuckDuckGo search test? To set it up, we are going to load the search page. Now there's this, this thing here, this actor attempts to. This is where the screenplay pattern comes in. Uh, in screenplay pattern, like I said, it's a pattern for interactions. What I always like to say is in screenplay, actors use abilities to perform interactions, right? Versus the page objects, which are you have pages with locators and action methods. Um, with screenplay, we separate concerns further. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. The actor is the initiator of all the interactions. So I have an actor object here, and that actually came from a fixture, essentially a setup function that was dependency injected here. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment, but just take it for granted right now is constructed in a, in like a setup and given to us. So we have an actor and anytime an actor wants to do two tasks, we say actor dot attempts to, right? Because they're attempting to do something. We don't know if they're going to be successful yet. This is a test case. So actor attempts to perform an interaction. And so here the interaction is to load a particular web page with a given URL. So I have an interaction named load. It's called search page or, or, and it passes in the search page URL. Um, underneath of that, Selenium WebDriver is there. Selenium WebDriver is an ability because it in, the ability of Selenium WebDriver enables the actor in order to load a page. And so the screenplay brings us all together so I can have a very readable step. Actor attempts to load the search logic page. And that's my arrange. As part of the act portion of my test, actor attempts to, what's the main action? What's the target thing? What's the main behavior being executed here? Actor attempts to search duck.go for a given phrase, right? I could be searching anything. It could be Panda, Python, Parakeet, whatever. Um, that phrase is coming in through a parameterization of our test case. So here, it, the PyTest test case function is literally just a plain old function with test underscore on the front. But I can parameterize it with different inputs. So here, I'm parameterizing a phrase. I'm choosing three different search strings, Panda, Python, Parakeet. And I'm injecting that into the test case so that it can be used here as a string variable. So this test will actually run three times because of this once for each phrase. So I'll be searching one time for Panda, searching one time for Python, searching one time for Parakeet. That's all scored. So then in the, once I do my main action, I need to verify that it was successful. So there's a couple assertions that we want to do, and that's all part of the assert phase. So what do I want to check after I do a search? I expect that um, the result page is loaded, has links and all the good stuff. So actor attempts to Verify result page input value is the phrase. So at the top, that input value is there. Actor attempts to verify result page title contains the phrase. That's the page title, like in the tab or whatever. And then finally, actor attempts to verify that the result links include whatever my phrase is. I want to make sure that when I search for panda, I see links for pandas and not for parakeets. So high level, we have our test case here. This is almost like reading plain English. Um, that's one of the powers of the screenplay pattern. So let's start to, or actually let's, let's run this real quick just to show how it works. And then we'll dig a level deeper into our, into our project to see how this magic is happening, right? Because at a high level, you can see, oh, well, these are words that indicate things, but how, how does the code actually work? So let's run the test. We can see right now it's set up using Chrome. So it's doing the test three times, once for each of those phrases. And it is pretty quick, but you can see DuckDuckGo, the browser pops up, DuckDuckGo page load, navigate, verifies. And so I was able to finish those three seconds at a, or three tests in about 10 seconds. Pretty good local machine here. Um, 
<clears throat> so let's see what else. My... Okay. Um, so let's now dig deeper into uh, what is going on in this code. So uh, let's look at the setup of what's going on here. So as I said, there was this actor that gets injected. When you're using PyTest, you do your setup and your cleanup using something called fixtures. A fixture is another function that will build objects that you can call in the signature of the test case functions. And PyTest will automatically resolve that and give that to you. So when it comes to things like your web driver object, any inputs into automation, and this actor object for our screenplay pattern, we want to be able to construct those using fixtures. We put those in a, a file called conftest.py. This is the standard name. I did not get to choose this name. PyTest will look for files of this name in the test directory automatically and then use that. So there are actually three things we want to set up. There's the config, the configuration for our tests. There's the browser, which is going to be using our, our Selenium web driver. And then there's the actor to use for screenplay. So let me X out this real quick, give some more room. So the config here is actually I, something I've created. Um, in the project directory, in the root level, I have a file called config.json. This is how I'm choosing to pass inputs into my test automation, right? Um, things like, hey, what browser do you want to use? Do you want to test Chrome? Do you want to test Firefox? Do you want to test headless Chrome, right? I want to be able to specify that because all the tests should run the same on any browser. Also, I'm tuning an implicit wait time for Selenium WebDriver. Selenium, we know we can do implicit or explicit waits. Since this is a small project, I'm going to be OK with an implicit wait. If this were something I'm trying to scale, I probably want to bake explicit waits into my screenplay calls. So here I have this set up. I like using JSON with a Python project because the Python standard library has a JSON module that makes it really easy to read. And so back to comp test, my config fixture, which has session scope, meaning once for the entire test run, what it will do is it will open that config JSON file and read the JSON data into a Python dictionary. Beautiful. Two lines right here, and I can read that config file. Then what I want to do is I want to make sure that the values in that config file are good, because if, if there's a problem in there, you want to catch it before any test run, before you start wasting time and resources executing. So I want to make sure that um, my browser config is one of the supported browsers. I want to make sure that my implicit weight is an integer and that that implicit weight is greater than zero. If that looks good, what my config uh, fixture will do is it will return that dictionary so that tests can access it and even other fixtures. So once I have my config, next thing I can do is I can use that config to help build my web driver object. So here we have another fixture called browser. You can see it takes in the config. And what it does is it looks inside the config to see, hey, what browser do you want? If you want Firefox, construct a Firefox driver. If you want Chrome, construct a Chrome driver. If you want headless Chrome, construct a Chrome driver with headless options. Otherwise, if it's not recognized, <laughs> fail. Then we're going to set the implicit weight for that browser based on the input we were given. And then we are going to not just return the browser object, but yield. Yielding is, uh, in Python, if you're not familiar, it makes something called a generator. Um, when it comes to PyTest fixtures, the way it works is anything before the yield is like the setup portion. Anything after the yield is the cleanup portion, because Python execution will automatically come back in here after the end of the test and perform cleanup operations. So we've, we've initialized our web driver, yielded it, then automatically after the test, we want to come back here and quit our web driver so we don't have those zombie processes. So then finally, the third fixture we have for setup is the actor. And that's that screenplay thing, the initiator of all interactions. So the actor will need the browser. And how we create it is like this. We say A equals actor. We create a new object. We could give him or her or it a name. We're choosing not to. And then to, add, to inject the ability 
for the web driver. We say actor can use and then pass it in. Uh, we're calling the ability browser and we're giving it the, the object with the variable browser. And then we're just going to return that. We don't need to do any cleanup here. So that's how we do our setup. Very clean. We can use it for any test. It's very, very reusable. It's very nice. So here and again, so when the test case called the actor fixture, you know, it, it was doing that actor setup, but that required the web driver. So it would automatically do that by dependency. And then the web driver needed the, the configuration to be read. So it did that. Boom, boom, boom. Everything comes through nicely. So now let's dig into our screenplay calls here. So uh, it, what I have done is I have actually created a test library package up here. Um, I create a test library because the tests directory is not meant to be a, a Python package, meaning no init, no imports or anything. I put all my test live in a package that can be read. This could be in the same project, in a different project, whatever. But I have two things. I have interactions and pages. Um, let's start with pages. Typically, if you're familiar with page object model, you might think like you have classes with locators and action methods. When you use screenplay, the, the recommended practice is that you will still have page classes, but only for modeling structure, not for performing interaction. And so what I've done here in this class is I have created a search page and a result page, um, and they have nothing but locators and possibly a URL. So here, my search page, the I want to model the search input field. So I create a locator. It's a tuple with the type of locator as well as the query for it. So I'm getting this by ID. Result page, I have two locators. One's a CSS selector, one is an ID. And so I can call these universally. I don't have to construct the page object and inject the web driver. It's just, these are essentially kind of like static classes you could almost think of. Um, universal, accessible, created one time. You don't have to create duplicate instances of it. And these are meant to be incredibly declarative. You know, they just model structure so that our interactions can use these locators. We hop over to the interactions class. This is where we start constructing some of those, um, those, those tasks that we saw in the main test case. So for example, um, when we said actor attempts to load the web page, here's the load task. Um, what it does is it, it is uh, part of the Python screenplay package. This, this task comes from a screenplay or from screenplay pattern import task. So we make a subclass of task. And actually, it's an, it's, it, actually in Python, it's an abstract class, never mind. So it's class. Um, what we do is we want to, uh, when we construct this class, we want to pass in a target URL. So that's saved as an instance variable. And then every task implements this perform as method. It gets injected with the actor. And so from the actor, we can then get the web driver object um, using the browser ability. And then we can make standard Selenium calls with the browser. So things like browser.get. Um, and so that's ultimately what's happening under the hood. It's just a little bit more verbose, a little, little more self-documenting. Um, or for example, my search duck, duck, go task. Uh, I passed in a phrase. Uh, inside the perform as, I got the browser object, the web driver object, and then I, I did browser find element for that search page search input. There's that locator from that page class. And then search input send keys, I typed the phrase and hit enter. And that's how search was performed. So you can see how we can construct these, these interactions, these tasks um, to do things with screenplay pattern. Um, then I have my other tasks here, you know, verifying the result page, whatever stuff, you know, make, performing assertions in these tasks here. Um, I also have a different kind of interaction called a question that will, um, whereas a task will just do something, a question will return a value. So here, like if I want to get the input value of something, you know, I can find an element, get its value attribute and return it. Or if I want to get the title of the page, I can return browser.title. Um, Right now, the Python screenplay package here is very bare bones. Um, in, in the C Sharp implementation I worked on, Boa Constrictor, we actually provided out of the box interactions, tasks and questions for basic web driver things like, do you want to get the text of an element? Do you want to get value? Do you want to click it? Um, I, we haven't done that yet in Python. 
All we have is core screenplay. So all of things, all the basic things like this input value of text list for title load, those should all be things that would be in a Python screenplay package given to you. You shouldn't need to implement those. What you would need to implement would be um, your custom tasks like search DuckDuckGo or verify your result page input. Um, so uh, yeah, so in a nutshell, that is how you would construct a Python test automation project in Python with PyTest using the screenplay pattern. <laughs> I believe we're out of time now. Uh, so if you have any questions, I would love to chat with you in the Hangout. Uh, I believe that's where we're going next. Is that true? Uh, we, we, we can take uh, one question. And we have okay. one question pending. So okay, what's the question? The question is, screenplay is something uh, specific to Python or open for Ooh. other languages as well? No, nah, so screenplay is just a design pattern. Um, it, it can be used in any language. Like I said, I've done it here in Python. At my previous company, we did it in C Sharp. Um, the Serenity BDD project has implemented screenplay in Java as well as in JavaScript. Uh, and if you're in some other language, you can, you can implement the pattern yourself. Uh, and we have one more question coming in. When, okay. we, uh, when we use the screenplay pattern for large projects, we should have multiple interactions class. Yes, yes, you would you would end up writing multiple interactions in a large project, um, though perhaps not as many as you might think. In my previous project uh, with Boa Constrictor, because Boa Constrictor had the basic interactions in the package itself, we found that we we didn't have to write too many custom interactions. There were certainly a good set of them, um, but not it wasn't like in the thousands or anything. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah. Those are two questions. Uh, uh, thanks, Mandy, for uh, giving that quick gist about uh, um, those three the the three years with uh, awesome. the screenplay pattern. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being part of uh, filming uh, for the conference.